So welcome to this Great Grades Maths video and this is part of Module 1 Using Numbers and this is Video Part 8 Decimal Numbers. So in this video we're going to look at terminating, recurring and irrational decimals and then we're going to look at how we can convert decimal numbers into fractions and we're also going to look at how addition and subtraction, multiplication and division of decimals can be done. And then finally, we will look at the decimals that you need to remember in fraction form. So decimal numbers are fractions of whole numbers. And there are three different types of decimal number that you need to be aware of. Firstly, terminating decimals. Secondly, recurring decimals. And then last of all, irrational decimals. So let's look at terminating decimals first of all. And terminating decimals are simply decimal numbers that have an end. For instance, 0 0.1, 0 0.125 and 0 0.25. All of these decimal numbers have an end and are terminating decimals. And one important thing to note about terminating decimals is that all of them can be converted into a fraction. So for instance, 0.5 as written here can be written also as a fraction as 1 over 2 or a half and the number 0.75 well that can also be written as a fraction as 3 over 4 now there are three steps that we need to follow if we want to convert a terminating decimal into a fraction the first step is that we need to remove the decimal point and we need to count the number of digits that are after it. So for instance, for 0 0.125, we remove the decimal place, so it turns into 125. And we count the number of digits after that decimal point and there are three digits. Now we need to divide this number by a 1 followed by the same number of zeros as digits that were after the decimal. So, for our example, we take the 125 and divide it by 1 followed by three zeros because there were three digits after the decimal place. So that gives us 125 over 1000. And then, once we've got the fraction, we need to simplify it. So 125, th 125 over 1000 that simplifies by dividing each number by 5 to 25 and 200 and then we can divide each number again by 5 and that simplifies to 5 over 40 and then finally we can uh, simplify that further by dividing by 5 again and that simplifies to our final fraction of 1 over 8 so now we've converted our decimal 0 0.125 into its final or lowest fractional form which is 1 over 8. Now let's look at recurring decimals. A recurring decimals do not have an end and so a good example of this is 0 0.33333333333 and it goes on forever, it never stops. So clearly Recurring decimals have a repeated part, and in the example that we've just looked at, it's 3. Now there are two ways to show that a decimal is a recurring decimal. The first is if the repeating part is just a digit, as it is for 0.3333, then a little dot is placed above the digit, just as shown here. If the repeated part is more than one digit, then a bar is drawn over the repeated digits. So for 0 0.125, 125, 125, etc., the repeated part is 125. And so we write it as 0 0.125 with a bar over the 125, as shown here. So recurring decimals can also be turned into fractions. And there are two steps that we need to follow to do this. First of all, the top number of the fraction is the repeating part of the decimal and then the second part of the fraction the bottom number well that's the same number of nines as is the number of digits on the top so for 0 0.3333333 that's represented here by 0 
with a dot above it as we talked about in the last slide the top number of the fraction is 3 that's the repeating part and then the bottom number is 9 as we have just one digit in the top number so that gives us 3 over 9 how about for 0 0.125 with the bar across the 125 so that's 0 0.125, 125, 125, 125 etc well again the top number is the repeating part which is, not point, which is 125 so 125 goes on the top and then we have three digits there so we put the number of nines that's equal to the number of digits so three nines so our final uh, fractional form is 125 over 999 now let's look at irrational decimals and irrational decimals cannot be converted into a fraction and an irrational decimal also never ends and this is because there is no repeating part to the number that comes after the decimal point and a good example of an irrational number is pi which is symbolized here by this Greek letter pi and pi is 3.14159265 3589 and it doesn't stop there it carries on and on and on and so far pi has been calculated to 10 billion digits and there isn't any part of it that repeats itself so how can we perform maths with decimals well let's first of all look at how we can add and subtract decimal numbers now this is done just the same as when we're adding or subtracting whole numbers and the key to this is to arrange the numbers with the decimal points lined up so let's try to do this sum first of all 5.68 minus 2.43 so we've got to line the numbers up first of all so we write out the sum again but lining up the numbers so 5.68 minus 2.43 and notice we're lining up the decimal points once we've done that we can subtract what the top the bottom number from the top number as we would before so 3, 8 minus 3 gives us 5 6 minus 4 well that gives us 2 there we are the decimal points we put the decimal point in and then 5 minus 2 well that gives us 3 so our final answer is 3 0.25. Well, let's look how we can multiply decimal numbers now. And there are two steps to multiplying decimal numbers. The first is that we need to take out the decimal point and we need to multiply the numbers normally. Secondly, is that we then put the decimal point back in once we've done the multiplication. And the new number that we'll have, the answer, well, that will have as many decimal places as the two original numbers had combined. So let's try to do this sum then as an example. 0 0.03 times 1.1. Well, 0 0.03, that has two decimal places. And 1.1 has one decimal place, which gives us three decimal places altogether. So the answer, the new number, will have three decimal places. Well, now we take out the decimal points. and that So 1.1 gives us 11 and 0 0.03 well that gives us 3 so now we have 11 and 3 and we can multiply these numbers together ordinarily which gives us 33 and now we need to put the decimal points back in so we said we had three decimal places that would be in the final answer so that gives us a final answer of 0 0.033 notice three decimal numbers after the decimal point so now let's look at division of decimals and it's important that before we look at this section that you must be able to divide whole numbers so if you have any difficulty with doing that then you need to go back to video part 4 and to revise division so let's try to do this, divi this division then 8.4 divided by 0 0.7 so first of all we need to get rid of the decimal points and we can do that by multiplying each number by 10 so 8.4 times by 10 becomes 84 and 0 0.7 
times that by 10 also, that becomes 7. And now we can divide the numbers. So we can draw our box, write the 7 outside, and the 84. So then first of all, how many times does 7 go into 8? Well, it's once with one remainder, so that makes the next number 14. And then 7 into 14 goes twice. So our final answer is 12. Now let's try to do a different division. 6.48 divided by 0 0.4. How can we do this? Because we have a different number of decimal points. Well, again, it's exactly the same. We need to get rid of the decimal point first of all. So we start with the smallest number. and We can times that by 10. So 0 0.4 becomes 4. And 6.4, we also have to times that by 10, the same number. And so that becomes 64 Point eight, And even though we still have a decimal point in this number, we can still multiply the numbers together. So we draw our box with the 4 outside of it and the 64.8 inside. Now 6 4s into 6, that goes once with 2 remainder, so the 4 becomes 24. So 4s into 24, well that is a 6, then we have the decimal point back in, and then 4s into 8, well that goes twice exactly. So our final answer is 16.2. As well as being able to do maths with fractions, you're expected to know the decimal form of some fractions. And this is that 0 0.75 is equal to 3 quarters, 3 over 4. That 0 0.5 is equal to 1 over 2, a half. That 0 0.25 is equal to a quarter, 1 over 4. And that 0 0.125 is equal to an eighth. By memorising these, this will make a lot of the exam questions a lot easier. Thanks for watching this Great Grades Maths video. For notes about this topic, practice questions, and for further videos, please visit greatgradestuition.com.